Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, on the panel, we have Reverend Linda and Linda Baker and Kathy Richmond, and I am doing the present presenting the topic that I have gotten from the Unity booklet that just was released, the, the prayer, if you can see this, um, the prayer for protection, and this is shading up. And it's um, it's breaking that prayer that we so often say every week um, at church services and then at other times. So it's um, a beloved prayer brought to life. And I'm taking an article from it um, about making God personal. So before I get into that, let's take a moment to pray, pray and open our hearts and our minds. So, so just relax, feel comfortable. Take that deep breath in that just is a cleansing breath that frees any of the tension within your body. And as you let it go, you can feel your relaxation happening and becoming in the present and in the moment. We're grateful for this time together and for the blessings of the wisdom and the guidance that is sent from the God above and from the spirit within. We know the universe provides for us all the things that we need to have. And we are so grateful for these blessings, for this time that we can share together and for this moment that we are open to divine wisdom and guidance. And with this, we say, amen. So um, this article was written by Reverend Saban. I'm not gonna butcher her last name, but she's the uh, minister of the Uni Unity of Huntington in New York. Um, and she wrote this about making God personal and it's short. So I think I will read her words that she put into this booklet. So we've learned in unity and new thought that Jesus brought a new spiritual understanding to the world. He brought a new way to look at God creator and a new way to look at our relationship to God. Jesus generally referred to God as father which in his day was a very positive term. It meant someone who was the head of the family, a leader, a guide, a protector. People looked up to and had faith in their fathers. They willingly followed the wise counsel of a father, knowing he would never lead them astray. They knew that regardless of anything they did or anything that happened, their father would always love them and care for them. I believe Jesus wanted us to think of God in those same terms. Jesus took God out of the sky and made that presence and power personal to everyone, everywhere. When I think of the prayer for protection, I am reminded of this new perspective that Jesus brought to the world. This prayer is all encompassing in just a few short lines. It typifies all that God has done, is doing, and will do for everyone. I know God is spirit and isn't a person with a gender, but this prayer makes me feel close to that presence and that power. When I affirm the light of God surrounds me, I feel uplifted because I recognize that the seeming seeming darkness around me, the fear, negativity, and doubts has no power over me. In truth, I am surrounded by the divine light of the Christ. I recognize the dark and negative energy is only a temporary appearance because in truth, I am walking in the light. I am reminded of the scripture, God is light, and in him, there is no darkness at all. This comes from 1 John verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 5. So when I affirm, the love of God enfolds me. <clears throat> I am comforted in knowing that the loving presence and power of God is with me, regardless of what I may be experiencing in the world. People I encounter may disagree with me or may not want me to succeed. However, when I declare this statement from the prayer for protection, I feel the love in my life, which is the essence of God. And I realize if God is for us, who is against us? And this comes from scriptures, Romans 8, 
chapter 8, verse 31. Jesus. When I affirm the power of God protects me, I am reminded that in my human self, as a physical being, I have limited power. If I am tempted to rely on my intellect or ego to fight my day-to-day -day battles, this statement reminds me that I don't need to fight my own battles. I am reminded the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. This comes from 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. The last two lines of this prayer are powerful. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. The presence of God represents the totality of God, the allness of God, the allness of spirit. It gives me a sense of awe to think that the allness that created the universe is watching over me and everyone else in the world at all times. It is guiding, protecting, and sustaining all of humankind. And it, it is omnipresent in, in that it is everywhere equally and evenly present. He will be with you. He will not fall, fail you or forsake you. And this comes from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. I thought this was a great way of making that prayer, um, make more of a deeper connection to that prayer and, and the understanding of Jesus' reference to God as Father and that figurehead in that time of Jesus was Father because so often people have a problem with the fathers and the, the the human fathers that they experience that to think of God as the father, they think of him as a punishing. And then there have been the religious zealots who have, you know, put the fear of God in you that it you know, it's not a kind, loving God. It's a God who's going to vengeance. And, you know, it's like that type of thing that many people have that fear and, and, and get away from wanting to believe in God or believe in that, you know, fatherly spirit because their experience with a father or with that teachings of God um, have been negative. And this, as I read this, I thought this just made it so kind and so gentle, which that prayer to me all the time does is just whenever I I'm in a situation, a lot of times when I get into my car and I'm going to drive somewhere, I'm on a road or I'm on the plane, I will recite that prayer just mentally in my head as just knowing that God is with me and I'm safe in whatever I'm in doing. So I just, I I really like this. I wanted to share this with others. Um, and you don't get the booklet. Sometimes you don't get to see this, but um, I'd like to hear my panel's thoughts on their idea of how they are making God personal. Who would like to share? Linda. That prayer takes me into my heart as close as communion does. Uh, when Jesus said, uh, this bread is my flesh, eat it. And this wine, it's my blood, drink it. To me, that that put Christ right in me, and uh, that the prayer for protection it takes me to that very same place. It, it it's it's uh, 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 like a communion that has no bread and wine, it, and and I always carry it with me. Uh, that's that's short and sweet, okay. Thank you, Linda. That was fun. Um, I'm sorry, Kathy, did you want to go next? I can. Um, yeah, I liked the part where she said, Father is our guide, our protector, and wise counsel. And I think that when I was in a previous religion, it was that the, the Father, the God was out there. And, you know, you had to do everything right, and then he would protect you. But what I love about unity and our religion is that God lives within us, and we can turn within, and we can recognize if I'm feeling um, unsure or not, you know, unsafe, I can 
go within and know that God dwells within me and that I am protected. So I think that um, I like that for me better than believing there's a God out there that I have to earn my right for his blessing. So that, that's what came to me. Thank you. I, I was going to talk about the, the fact that Jesus frequently used the word Abba for God, and that was very familiar, like daddy, as if we said daddy. And I really like that because father is, for me, more familiar, but daddy is so much more personal. And I, I really love that. And honestly, in my prayer work, sometimes I use that too, uh, keeping it, keeping it personal, keeping it fresh. Another thing that I wanted to share on the, the prayer of protection is, you know, it's so powerful, not only for us, but we can say that prayer for anyone in the world, anyone that's on our heart, and no matter what they're facing, visualize them being held and protected and loved and kept secure and safe. And praying the prayer for protection for my loved ones always just reminds me that wherever they are, God is. And whatever they're going through, God will be right there, the source, the protector, the supplier of all things. I love the prayer. And this was a fun, fun topic. Thank you. And uh, Kathy Richmond, would you like to pray us out? I would love to. If you would all just maybe close your eyes and take in a deep breath. And we say, dear father, we are one with you. Oh God, we are one with you. You have made us one with you. You have taught us that if we are open to one another, you dwell in us. Help us to preserve this openness and to fight for it with all our hearts. And we thank you, dear Father, for this special time that we together, our, our group of friends can come together and share these thoughts but not only share them amongst ourselves, but being able to share them to uh, the media and other people can watch. So we are so grateful for that. And we say, thank you, Father. So this was a, a very interesting topic and I'm so grateful that we all could comment on it. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. What did you think? Did you like it? What, what else would you like to hear? And guess what? You could join our panel because it all you got to do is just call the church and go, you know what? I kind of like those ladies and what they're talking about. And I want to be a part of that because I think I have something to add. So if you would like to do that, we would ask that you follow up. And um, in any event, uh, let, let us know how you liked our talk today and blessings to you all until we see you next time. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.